we want to show you how we made a profit of 550,000 Rand while flipping a property in Pretoria, South Africa in 2023. In this video, we will be discussing the cost that we incurred during this process. That is typically labor, materials, things that we need to buy for the project. This is also taking into consideration that we already have a construction business. We are not paying a contractor, we are not buying the tools, we, not, uh, we don't have any of that setup costs for the business. So that is something which you need to consider when you're doing your own deal. Um, we will be laying out the labor and the material cost for each segment of the property which we can lay out like kitchen, bathroom, flooring, all of that. Our cost is not involved in this calculation because our personal cost, our personal cost the company's cost is not in this calculation because the profit is what pays us our commission for this deal. At the end of this video, so you have to stay tuned till the end, we'll show you a complete deal breakdown what it cost us, what we made, and what our profit is. Before you even start with constructing, before you pick up a hammer, or before you pick up a paintbrush in flipping a property, there are a few costs that um, are paper costs. We call these transaction costs. So as a transaction on this property, the property cost us 1.2 million rand. The second cost is transfer costs and duties, that is a tax that's payable to SARS, as well as the transfer costs to the attorneys. As a total, on this specific project, we paid 71,000 Rand. The second cost is throughout this project, we owned this property for eight months, right? That's start to finish start from to when finish. we started paying occupational rent. Yes. And then we also started paying a bond, and that is still, it's from our name. Off of our name. Off of our name. Yes. So that uh, is eight months in total. That's the project time. We pay one of two things. We either pay the bank a bond a repayment or we pay the previous owner an occupational rent. Now, we can get into a lot of details about that occupational rent and whatever, but it costs us that money to own the property or to be in the property. Plus minus a 1% of the buying price. Of the well, property. yes, so that's a, that's a good guide is to say 1% is a good occupational rent that we typically put into a contract or 1% is very close with current interest rates to the amount you'll be paying as a bond repayment. In total, our total carry costs for this project was 120,000 Rand. And then right at the end, we pay City of Tswane or, or your local municipality a clearance figure that's three or four months in advance for rates and taxes as well as electricity and water. So it's an estimated total that they give you and that's to clear the Tswane bill and that is another 23,000 rand. And then lastly, when you sell the property, there is commission and in this case worked out at 7%, it's 196,000 rand on the sales price which was 2.8 million rand and that is property. that is normally paid by the seller yes. and that is when selling it through a, a estate exactly. agent we did we sold this property privately so we'll deduct that 196 again that makes the total paper or transaction costs on this deal 214,000 rand the first of our line items that we can set out for you is structural work. When we bought this property, there was quite a lot of unpermitted, unpermitted building work that was done on the property, which is not on plan, which we then normally remove from the property because we are gonna sell it at a higher rate and then you will get a lot of inspections and- By uh, the banks themselves. By the so. banks, 
They do inspections to, to make sure everything on the property is on plan. But anything that is not on plan, we want to remove. And that is normally a demo cost, which is not that expensive because demoing anything is cheap in South Africa, the labor is cheap. We acquired about 10,000 Rand to that. Then we did some additions, and that is normally adding some stairs, adding some stoops, adding some patios, a, a few th small things uh, in relation to the project at the outside of the property. This is, like I said, some flooring work, some small building works, maybe a few terraces and that type of thing. Sometimes almost just taking it back to what it needs to be based on the plans as well. So yes. we, we remove these illegal lapas and patios and stuff within it to make it good again to be something, right? So that's it. Flooring. So we added another estimate of about 15,000 to that. Then we have uh, some roof fixes that we normally do because we can see there's some water damage or we see some ceiling damage or we see that the water isn't flowing properly through the gutters or the stormwater drains. Um, then we did a, a couple of additions to that and some waterproofing on the roof as well. We added another 10,000 for that. We don't open up everything, we just fix where the yes, we, evidence we of fix where we have visual water. problems. Then there was also uh, on the exterior wall, there was a couple of structural cracks. So we fixed the foundation, broke down a big piece of the wall and also rebuilt it and supported it a bit better with some pillars. So this equates to the structural work and that totals up to 70,000 rand. So again, just to clarify, this isn't exactly how the process went. We just broke down the, co the costs in this way. And then we get to exterior. So exterior for us includes doors. It includes a feature bag wash that we did on the outside walls. Garage doors, you mean? Ga garage doors. Garage doors cost us 10,000 rand. Uh, these were uh, reused because it's, not, it, it's a solid wooden door that we got from a different property. So we bought those from the other property and uh, refinished them and so on. These doors were probably valued at like 20 or 30,000 yes. Rand, but we paid 10,000 Rand for that. We fixed up the gate, we did a bit, bunch of landscaping and flooring and pat, uh, patios and grass and a bunch of things like that on the outside, which was about 30,000 Rand. The patios, which included a braai, construction of a braai, a boma, a boma um, a lot of concrete work and stairs, like you said previously. Um, windows, there's a bunch of windows. We normally try to keep the steel windows for our market, kind of makes sense. But then we replace a bunch of doors and stuff like that. So Aluminium sliding aluminium doors. Aluminium sliding doors. So all of that was about 30,000 rand, the windows and the doors. And then a uh, fireplace chimney that we had to fix up, right? It was kind of working, but not a fireplace and the bra area, both on the same chimney, but they were some work that needed to be done, we give that 10,000 rand. So it cost us a total on the exterior of 120,000 rand. The next item we have is plastering and wall finishes. Because in Garfontein and Moraleta and Ferry Glen, a lot of houses were built with a face brick, semi face brick. brick but a really rough face brick. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a clinker, right? So a clinker that's got burns and stuff, and it's a very old look, right? So yes. it's like a light brown sometimes, or a dark brown sometimes. It doesn't really appeal to the modern buyer. So a lot of the times, we either spray the brick straight like straight on that, we spray the color. Sometimes we do a bag wash finish, which is just like a plaster effect where you don't put as much plastering on the wall so you can still see the brick finish and then sometimes we go all out and just plaster the wall with this or specific a yes of this, right? with this, this specific property the interior walls were a lot of them with face brick and in Which a bedroom yes and in a bedroom it's not ideal you can't really hang things on the wall it just it's That's really rough yeah on the interior most of the bedrooms, we plastered three of the interior walls. On the outside, the, we, we did the bag wash finish, which we will also see on the, on the pictures and videos. Um, this is also just to, to give our style to the property. It's a low maintenance option. It doesn't cost as much. Um, to the bag wash uh, finish that we did on the walls, we allocated about 20,000. Then to the plastering on the interior of the property, there was about another 20,000, and that is probably about 200 squares or so of plastering. 200 squares of floor plan, which... No, 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 200 oh. squares of interior physical okay. wall squares. 
and we allocate it to this category, 40,000. As soon as that plastering and rhinolite has been done, we then need to paint again, right? So the interior paint jobs, as well as the exterior, including things like a wood seal to, to wooden doors, including things like the garage doors, including the roof. So as a total for paint, we are talking about 100,000 grand. The next line item we have is kitchens. Kitchen is one of the most expensive parts of the property. Uh, it's also very diverse. You have a lot of things. You have cabinetry, you have woodwork, you have stonework, you have tiling, you have plumbing, you have electrical. It's a bunch of costs. We're going to try and give an accurate, breakdown, give an accurate breakdown of as much as we can because there's a lot of things that you can't really account for. Firstly, the, the biggest thing in the kitchen is probably the cabinetry, the cabinet work. Um, in this property, there were some skeletons of the kitchen that we could reuse. This normally saves us maybe five to 10,000 Rand oh, wait a on the wood. Skeletons in the kitchen cupboards, skeleton, oh, that's, just explain. The, the skeleton of the kitchen cabinet is Base basically the, the frame. Yes. The frame that you have, it doesn't include a door, it doesn't include the side panels, which are the same color as Definitely the doors. Definitely white, non-designed. Yes. Yes. So we used some of that base cabinet, yes. right? This is something that we, we reuse and I would say normally on the size of the kitchen we would be able to reuse about 30 to 40 percent of the kitchen skeleton. So not all of them, we're just not reusing some and just yes. not throwing a perfectly good cabinet away. Yes. The main cost of this kitchen cabinetry I would say is about 40,000 rand. This is including the labor and the material. The next big cost in a kitchen like this would be the countertops. In this house we had about 50 12 to 15 meter of countertops. The one was a big island, so it's a bit more expensive. You put an easy quartz or yes. an engineered stone product in there. Yes, house. that is a quartz top, it's a 20 mil top, and that equated to about 25,000. In this kitchen, we also have quite a lot of plumbing with a prep bowl and the scullery at the back, and we have three appliances. So there's quite a lot of plumbing and piping that goes into a project like this and this equated to about 15,000. We also then have a backsplash, which consists of a tile that we cut to make it look a bit more like a designer okay, tile. Yeah. To that we allocated 5,000. For the hardware in this kitchen, we used soft close hinges and soft close runners, and we normally buy these things as well as the handles. We normally buy these from a place like a Galma, which is a bit more economical option. The quality is still good, it's not something that breaks often, it's not something that we have problems with. We gave 10,000 Rand to this portion of the kitchen. For the appliances, we put SMIG appliances. We went a bit all out on these, yes. right? Yeah. Again, we had an oven that we could repurpose from another property. That was about uh, eight to 10,000 Rand appliance that we, that we reinstalled. reinstalled there. And then we also added a SMEC stovetop, yes. gas stovetop to, to match the, the oven that we inserted there. That forced us to also go for a SMEC, uh, I think we spent about six or seven on there. 15 in total, yes, with the gas installation that's 15. and all of that. That equates to a total of 110,000 for the kitchen. Then on to the bathrooms. Now, like Larry said, with the kitchens, Bathrooms is one of the other big places where you can splurge and give an impression on a property, but it's also one of the most expensive places, well, where you spend quite a lot of money. The first obvious thing in the bathrooms is tiles. The tiles in total of the physical tile, as well as the cement, the grout, the labor, all of that equates to about 10,000 Rand on a bathroom. This is on one bathroom. And this is the, the standard about four squares floor mm -hmm. area. Well, four to six maybe, yeah, but with a bath. And then about 20, 25 square meters of wall tiles. Uh, so let's call it about 10,000 Rand. Then on the appliances, well, what we call bathroom appliances, that includes things like baths, basins. showers, basins, those types of things. That's about another 10,000 Rand on the bathroom. Plumbing is about 10,000 Rand as well. That includes uh, pipe work as well as stop taps, uh, wastes, all of, all of those types of things. 
And then accessories is about another 10,000 Rand. That includes toilet roll holders, uh, towel rails, and then also mixers, shower heads, all of those types of things. So that breaks it down to about 40,000 Rand per bathroom. Now in this house, we had two bathrooms. And a half. Two and a half bathrooms. So let's call it 40 times two, that's 80, and another 20 for the half bathroom. So that's another 100,000 Rand for all of the bathrooms in this property. For the flooring of this property, we redid all the flooring inside and outside. I think the easiest way to break it down is we'll, we'll talk about the laminate flooring that we did. For bedrooms. We normally do that in the bedrooms because it is not something that can take water, so you can't clean it with a wet mop. And but it like is that. also nice and a warm feeling yes. for the bedrooms instead yes. of cold tiles. The rest of the areas, we did a tile flooring. All of these tiles that we use on all of our projects is from one supplier and that is power tiles and that's why we get a good price on it and a good enough option that really accentuates the house right that is one of the best tips that we can give you is to create a supplier relationship with all of your suppliers that will make sure that you get the best prices on those things. For this property in the bedrooms we had about 50 squares of laminate that we used and that equates to about 15,000 Rand. Then also we did about 200 squares of tiling in this property and that equated to 50,000. So the total of our flooring is 65,000. Then one of the other places where you can still add some styling and finish to this property line is lighting. Uh, feature lights make a massive difference when you look at a property on this property for feature lights as well as all the basic LED panel lights that we installed. We spent about 15,000. Then there's also a lot of other electrical work that plug sockets, light switches and electrical wiring and the electrical bill for uh, the electrician bill for this. And that was about another 15,000 Rand on this property, making our total electrical bill about 30,000 Rand. On each project, there's a couple of things that you can't put under a category and there's a lot of things that we need to touch up or just add one or two. We, we're not necessarily replacing all the bedroom doors and we're not replacing all the skirtings of the property. And so it's also smalls, right, that smalls. we don't have a massive category for, yeah. but... They add up to a significant up. sum. And uh, there's so many small things in one property. What does that typically include? That typically includes door handles, cornices, skirtings. Um, some doors need replacing, some hinges need replacing in the bedrooms. There's so many small things, small ceiling patches. Labor, right? Yes, uh, labour also. Everything that needs to be done needs a person doing it. So that labor, we, we, we have a total labor cost for, for a property, but that is also divided into the categories as well, like the flooring and the tiling and the electrical. We, we've told you about some of the labor costs that we incurred there. On this remainder of labor, door handles, smalls, miscellaneous items, there's a lot of those, and we can't really put a tag on all of them. On each of them. Yeah. So we've allocated around 200,000 to that bill alone. Getting to the real numbers and the profit of this deal, right? So let's put in a deal breakdown. We purchased this house for 1.2 million rand. We then spent... We spent a million and 50,000 on the total deal. That is with all the costs that we listed in the video. We sold this property privately, like we explained, with the Arden Estate Agent Commission for 2,800,000 Rand. That leaves us with a profit of 550,000 on this deal. So this is what we then call our gross profit. What we still have to deduct of this is our own profit or our own salaries, as well as our vehicles, our insurance, our telephone bills, all of those types of things. And then also we borrowed money to do a deal like this. So also the repayment to our investor. Now we're not gonna disclose all of that on here, but it varies and that's what you have to negotiate then. So we've got a gross profit of 550,000 Rand of this property that we now have to use to pay all our personal expenses in the company, as well as pay our investor. That was the totality of this deal. 
If you like this, please share it to someone who might also find value. Like and subscribe, please. Leave a comment if you would like to see more of these deal breakdowns.